those of us that like to modify our cars like to add circuits to them in the form of adding off-road lights or stereos or other accessories. Now I'm the same way. I like to modify my cars and you can either add load to an existing circuit, which engineers design loads on their circuits with a safety factor. So there's probably 10% that you could add to any given circuit and be safe. But to add loads the proper way, you should use a relay. So I've shown you some relays here. And uh, the first one I've got is uh, a Hella relay. I like using these relays because they're a quality relay. And this little guy, and this is the same, it just has a different housing and a place to physical connection, a bracket attached to it. So they're the same relay. These relays have outstanding specs. So here's the spec sheet from the Hella website. And here's the two part numbers. The first one is the, the little guy that uh, doesn't have the weather shield on it and the part number for the second one that has the weather shield. Both are rated at 40 amps continuous on the normally open contacts and 20 amps continuous on the normally closed contacts. So the coil resistance to pull in the coil requires 100 ohms plus or minus 10%. So that gives us, by Ohm's law, in a 12 volt system, it requires about 0.12 amps. So you're only adding about 0.12 amps to the circuit that you're activating this coil with. So say you want to turn on your headlights and have a particular light come on. You add this to the headlight circuit, you're only adding 0.12 amps. Now, by comparison, I'm going to pull out my little uh, spare bulbs box and a 168 bulb requires 0.3 amps and a 194 lamp. These little guys that, are, um, that illuminate the dash or the side marker lamps require 0.3 amps. So about twice the load that this little relay puts on. And you can have a circuit with supplies 40 amps of power. So to wire the relay, here's the wiring schematic for these relays. And it's really the same for this uh, cheap relay that I got at the parts store. It has a, a circuit that pulls in the coil with a resistor positive and negative connections so you you run a switch and power that then you have a normally closed circuit and a normally open circuit so when the power is applied to the coil it pulls this switch and it pulls it over to the normally open side very simple so i'm going to show you three ways to connect to a relay. Now if you're on the interior of the car, I like to use this kind of relay. It doesn't need to be protected by the weather. It's a little cheaper than the, the one that has the housing on it. Now when I connect to this relay, you can use a pigtail like this. These are very inexpensive. The problem with this pigtail is you have a, a butt splice connection here and you still have this connection where you connect to the relay. So what I like to do, and I'll link to it in, a, in my description, is I like to add a female disconnector connection to the end of the wire, and this just slides on over the, the spade connection on the relay. So those end connections are insulated then from each other. And the individual wires, that's the only connection that you have for that particular relay. Now, if it's under the hood, I like to use this style relay. It comes with a, a gasket. Now, if you use a little dielectric grease on here to lube this, it slides in easily. And it has a, a mechanical connection where it clips in. And uh, it's completely sealed. So it wires exactly the same way. 
it has the two activation to activate the coil, positive and negative. And then it has, and then they have a common, and they have on the outside a normally open and then a normally closed on the inside. So again, the common, normally open, and normally closed. And both of these relays look the same on the inside. So the common, normally open, and normally closed. And then the activation circuit on the outside.